Justice Freiherr von Liebig was a German chemist who made major contributions to agricultural and biological chemistry, and was considered the founder of organic chemistry. As a professor at the University of Gießen, he devised the modern laboratory-oriented teaching method, and for such innovations, he is regarded one of the greatest chemistry teachers of all time. He has been described as the father of the fertilizer industry for his emphasis on nitrogen and trace minerals as essential plant nutrients, and his formulation of the law of the minimum which described how plant growth relied on the scarcest nutrient resource, rather than the total amount of resources available. He also developed a manufacturing process for beef extracts, and founded a company, Liebig Extract of Meat Company, that later trademarked the OXO brand Beef Bouillon Cube. He popularized, though he did not invent, the Liebig condenser. Early Life and Education Justice von Liebig was born in Darmstadt into the middle-class family of Johann George Liebig and Maria Caroline Moser in early May 1803. His father was a dries altar and hardware merchant who compounded and sold paints, varnishes and pigments, which he developed in his own workshop. From childhood Justice was fascinated with chemistry. At the age of 13, Liebig lived through the year without a summer, when the majority of food crops in the northern hemisphere were destroyed by a volcanic winter. Germany was among the hardest hit in the global famine that ensued, and the experience is said to have shaped Liebig's later work. Thanks in part to Liebig's innovations in fertilizers and agriculture, the 1816 famine became known as the last great subsistence crisis in the Western world. Liebig attended grammar school at the Ludwig Georges Gymnasium in Darmstadt, from the age of 8 to 14. Leaving without a certificate of completion, he was apprenticed for several months to the apothecary Gottfried Pirsch in Heppenheim before returning home, possibly because his father could not afford to pay his indentures. He worked with his father for the next two years, then attended the University of Bonn, studying under Carl Wilhelm Gottlob Kastner, a business associate of his father. When Kastner moved to the University of Erlangen, Liebig followed him. Liebig left Erlangen in March 1822, in part because of his involvement with the Radical Corps Renania, a nationalist student organization, but also because of his hopes for more advanced chemical studies. The circumstances are clouded by possible scandal. In late 1822 Liebig went to study in Paris on a grant obtained for him by Kastner from the Hessian government. He worked in the private laboratory of Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac, and was also befriended by Alexander von Humboldt and Georges Cuvier. Liebig's doctorate from Erlangen was conferred on June 23, 1823, a considerable time after he left, as a result of Kastner's intervention on his behalf. Kastner pleaded that the requirement of a dissertation be waived, and the degree granted in absentia. Research and Development Liebig left Paris to return to Darmstadt in April 1824. On May 26, 1824, at the age of 21 and with Humboldt's recommendation, Liebig became a professor extraordinarius at the University of Gießen. Liebig's appointment was part of an attempt to modernize the University of Gießen and attract more students. He received a small stipend, without laboratory funding or access to facilities. His situation was complicated by the presence of existing faculty, Professor Wilhelm Zimmermann, 1780-1825, taught general chemistry as part of the philosophy faculty, leaving medical chemistry and pharmacy to Professor Philip Vogt in the medical faculty. Vogt was happy to support a reorganization in which pharmacy was taught by Liebig and became the responsibility of the Faculty of Arts, rather than the Faculty of Medicine. Zimmermann found himself competing unsuccessfully with Liebig for students and their lecture fees. He refused to allow Liebig to use existing space and equipment, and finally committed suicide on July 19, 1825. The deaths of Zimmermann and a professor Blumhoff who taught technology and mining opened the way for Liebig to apply for a full professorship. Liebig was appointed to the Ordent Liker Chair in Chemistry on December 7, 1825, receiving a considerably increased salary and a laboratory allowance. Liebig married Henriette Jetchen Moldenhauer, the daughter of a state official, in May 1826. They had five children, George, Agnes, Hermann, Johanna, and Marie. 
Although Liebig was Lutheran and Jet Chen Catholic, their differences in religion appear to have been resolved amicably by bringing their sons up in the Lutheran religion and their daughters as Catholics. Transforming Chemistry Education Liebig and several associates proposed to create an institute for pharmacy and manufacturing within the university. The Senate, however, uncompromisingly rejected their idea, stating that it was not the university's task to train apothecaries, soap makers, beer brewers, dyers, and vinegar distillers. As of December 17, 1825, they ruled that any such institution would have to be a private venture. This decision actually worked to Liebig's advantage. As an independent venture, he could ignore university rules and accept both matriculated and non-matriculated students. Liebig's institute was widely advertised in pharmaceutical journals, and opened in 1826. Its classes in practical chemistry and laboratory procedures for chemical analysis were taught in addition to Liebig's formal courses at the university. From 1825 to 1835, the laboratory was housed in the guardroom of a disused barracks on the edge of town. The main laboratory space was about in size and included a small lecture room, a storage closet as well as a main room with ovens and work tables. An open colonnade outside could be used for dangerous reactions. Liebig could work there with eight or nine students at a time. He lived in a cramped apartment on the floor above with his wife and children. Liebig was one of the first chemists to organize a laboratory in its present form, engaging with students in empirical research on a large scale through a combination of research and teaching. His methods of organic analysis enabled him to direct the analytical work of many graduate students. Liebig's students were from many of the German states as well as Britain and the United States, and they helped create an international reputation for their Dr. Vader. His laboratory became renowned as a model institution for the teaching of practical chemistry. It was also significant for its emphasis on applying discoveries in fundamental research to the development of specific chemical processes and products. In 1833, Liebig was able to convince Chancellor Justin von Linde to include the institute within the university. In 1839, he obtained government funds to build a lecture theatre and two separate laboratories, designed by architect Paul Hoffman. The new chemistry laboratory featured innovative glass-fronted fume cupboards and venting chimneys. By 1852, when he left Gießen for Munich, more than 700 students of chemistry and pharmacy had studied with Liebig. Instrumentation a significant challenge facing 19th-century organic chemists was the lack of instruments and methods of analysis to support accurate, replicable analyses of organic materials. Many chemists worked on the problem of organic analysis, including French Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac and Swedish Johns Jacob Berzelius, before Liebig developed his version of an apparatus for determining the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen content of organic substances in 1830. It involved an ingenious array of five glass bulbs, called a caliaparat to trap the oxidation product of the carbon in the sample, following combustion of the sample. Before reaching the caliaparat, the combustion gases were conducted through a tube of hygroscopic calcium chloride, which absorbed and retained the oxidation product of the hydrogen of the sample, namely water vapor. Next, in the caliaparat, Carbon dioxide was absorbed in a potassium hydroxide solution in the three lower bulbs, and used to measure the weight of carbon in the sample. For any substance consisting only of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, the percentage of oxygen was found by subtracting the carbon and hydrogen percentages from 100%, the remainder must be the percentage of oxygen. A charcoal furnace, a sheet steel tray in which the combustion tube was laid, was used for the combustion. Weighing carbon and hydrogen directly, rather than estimating them volumetrically, greatly increased the method's accuracy of measurement. Liebig's assistant Carl Etling perfected glass blowing techniques for producing the caliaparat, and demonstrated them to visitors. Liebig's caliaparat simplified the technique of quantitative organic analysis and rendered it routine. Brock suggests that the availability of a superior technical apparatus was one reason why Liebig was able to attract so many students to his laboratory. His method of combustion analysis was used pharmaceutically, 
and certainly made possible many contributions to organic, agricultural and biological chemistry. Liebig also popularized use of a counter-current water cooling system for distillation, still referred to as a Liebig condenser. Liebig himself attributed the vapor condensation device to German pharmacist Johann Friedrich August Gottling, who had made improvements in 1794 to a design discovered independently by German chemist Christian Ehrenfried Wiegel in 1771, by French scientist, P. J. Poisonier in 1779, and by Finnish chemist Johann Gadolin in 1791. Although it was not widely adopted until after Liebig's death, when safety legislation finally prohibited the use of mercury in making mirrors, Liebig proposed a process for silvering that eventually became the basis of modern mirror making. In 1835 he reported that aldehydes reduce silver salts to metallic silver. After working with other scientists, Carl August von Steinheil approached Liebig in 1856 to see if he could develop a silvering technique capable of producing high-quality optical mirrors for use in reflecting telescopes. Liebig was able to develop blemish-free mirrors by adding copper to ammoniated silver nitrate and sugar. An attempt to commercialize the process and drive out mercury mirror-making and its injurious influence on workers' health was unsuccessful. Organic Chemistry One of Liebig's frequent collaborators was Friedrich Wohler. They met in 1826 in Frankfurt, after independently reporting on the preparation of two substances, cyanic acid and fulminic acid, that apparently had the same composition but very different characteristics. The silver fulminate investigated by Liebig, was explosive, whereas the silver cyanate found by Wohler, was not. After reviewing the disputed analyses together, they agreed that both were valid. The discovery of these and other substances led Johns Jacob Berzelius to suggest the idea of isomers, substances that are defined not simply by the number and kind of atoms in the molecule but also by the arrangement of those atoms. In 1832, Justice Liebig and Friedrich Wohler published an investigation of the oil of bitter almonds. They transformed pure oil into several halogenated compounds, which were further transformed in other reactions. Throughout these transformations, a single compound, which they named benzoyl, preserves its nature and composition unchanged in nearly all its associations with other bodies. Their experiments proved that a group of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms can behave like an element, take the place of an element, and can be exchanged for elements in chemical compounds. This laid the foundation for the doctrine of compound radicals, which can be seen as an early step in the development of structural chemistry. The 1830s were a period of intense investigation of organic compounds by Liebig and his students, and of vigorous debate about the theoretical implications of their results. Liebig published on a wide variety of topics, personally averaging 30 papers per year between 1830 and 1840. Liebig not only isolated individual substances, but also studied their interrelationships and the ways in which they degraded and metamorphosed into other substances, looking for clues to the understanding of both chemical composition and physiological function. Other significant contributions by Liebig during this time include his examination of the nitrogen content of bases, the study of chlorination and the isolation of chloral, 1832. The identification of the ethyl radical, 1834. The oxidation of alcohol and formation of aldehyde, 1835. The polybasic theory of organic acids, 1838. And the degradation of urea, 1837. Writing about the analysis of urine, a complex organic product, he made a declaration that reveals both the changes that were occurring in chemistry over a short time and the impact of his own work. At a time when many chemists such as Johns Jacob Berzelius still insisted on a hard and fast separation between the organic and inorganic, Liebig asserted, quote, The production of all organic substances no longer belongs just to living organisms. It must be seen as not only probable, but as certain, that we shall be able to produce them in our laboratories. Sugar, salicin, and morphine will be artificially produced. 
Of course, we do not yet know how to do this, because we do not yet know the precursors from which these compounds arise. But we shall come to know them. End of quote. Liebig's arguments against any chemical distinction between living, physiological, and dead chemical processes proved a great inspiration to several of his students and others who were interested in materialism. Though Liebig distanced himself from the direct political implications of materialism, he tacitly supported the work of Karl Vogt, Jacob Molschott, and Ludwig Buchner. Plant Nutrition By the 1840s, Liebig was attempting to apply theoretical knowledge from organic chemistry to real-world problems of food availability. His book Die Organische Chemie in Ihrer Anwendung auf Agriculture und Physiologie, Organic Chemistry in its Application to Agriculture and Physiology, 1840, promoted the idea that chemistry could revolutionize agricultural practice, increasing yields and lowering costs. It was widely translated, vociferously critiqued, and highly influential. Liebig's book discussed chemical transformations within living systems, both plant and animal, outlining a theoretical approach to agricultural chemistry. The first part of the book focused on plant nutrition, the second on chemical mechanisms of putrefaction and decay. Liebig's awareness of both synthesis and degradation led him to become an early advocate of conservation, promoting ideas such as the recycling of sewage. Liebig argued against prevalent theories about role of humus in plant nutrition, which held that decayed plant matter was the primary source of carbon for plant nutrition. Fertilizers were believed to act by breaking down humus, making it easier for plants to absorb. Associated with such ideas was the belief that some sort of vital force distinguished reactions involving organic as opposed to inorganic materials. Early studies of photosynthesis had identified carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen as important, but disagreed over their sources and mechanisms of action. Carbon dioxide was known to be taken in and oxygen released during photosynthesis, but researchers suggested that oxygen was obtained from carbon dioxide, rather than from water. Hydrogen was believed to come primarily from water. Researchers disagreed about whether sources of carbon and nitrogen were atmospheric or soil-based. Nicolas Theodore de Saussure's experiments, reported in Recherches Chimiques sur la Végétation, 1804, suggested that carbon was obtained from atmospheric rather than soil-based sources, and that water was a likely source of hydrogen. He also studied the absorption of minerals by plants, and observed that mineral concentrations in plants tended to reflect their presence in the soil in which the plants were grown. However, the implications of de Saussure's results for theories of plant nutrition were neither clearly discussed nor easily understood. Liebig reaffirmed the importance of de Saussure's findings, and used them to critique humus theories, while regretting the limitations of de Saussure's experimental techniques. Using more precise methods of measurement as a basis for estimation, he pointed out contradictions such as the inability of existing soil humus to provide enough carbon to support the plants growing in it. By the late 1830s, researchers like Carl Sprengel were using Liebig's methods of combustion analysis to assess manures, concluding that their value could be attributed to their constituent minerals. Liebig synthesized ideas about the mineral theory of plant nutrition and added his own conviction that inorganic materials could provide nutrients as effectively as organic sources. In his theory of mineral nutrients, Liebig identified the chemical elements of nitrogen, N, phosphorus, P, and potassium, K, as essential to plant growth. He reported that plants acquire carbon, C, and hydrogen, H, from the atmosphere and from water, H2O. As well as emphasizing the importance of minerals in the soil, he argued that plants feed on nitrogen compounds derived from the air. This assertion was a source of contention for many years, and turned out to be true for legumes, but not for other plants. Liebig also popularized Carl Sprengel's theorem of minimum, known as law of the minimum, stating that plant growth is not determined by the total resources available, but by the scarcest available resource. A plant's development is limited by the one essential mineral that is in the relatively shortest supply. This concept of limitation can be visualized as Liebig's barrel, a metaphorical barrel in which each stave represents a different element. 
A nutrient stave that is shorter than the others will cause the liquid contained in the barrel to spill out at that level. This is a qualitative version of the principles used for determining the application of fertilizer in modern agriculture. Organic chemistry was not intended as a guide to practical agriculture. Liebig's lack of experience in practical applications, and differences between editions of the book, fueled considerable criticism. Nonetheless, Liebig's writings had a profound impact on agriculture, spurring experiment and theoretical debate in Germany, England, and France. One of his most recognized accomplishments is the development of nitrogen-based fertilizer. In the first two editions of his book, 1840-1842, Liebig reported that there was not sufficient nitrogen in the atmosphere, and argued that nitrogen-based fertilizer was needed to grow the healthiest possible crops. Liebig believed that nitrogen could be supplied in the form of ammonia, and recognized the possibility of substituting chemical fertilizers for natural ones, animal dung, etc. He later became convinced that nitrogen was sufficiently supplied by precipitation of ammonia from the atmosphere, and argued vehemently against the use of nitrogen-based fertilizers for many years. An early commercial attempt to produce his own fertilizers was unsuccessful, due to lack of testing in actual agricultural conditions, and to lack of nitrogen in the mixtures. Liebig's difficulties in reconciling theory and practice reflected that the real world of agriculture was more complex than was at first realized. By the publication of the seventh German edition of Agricultural Chemistry he had moderated some of his views, admitting some mistakes and returning to the position that nitrogen-based fertilizers were beneficial or even necessary. Nitrogen fertilizers are now widely used throughout the world, and their production is a substantial segment of the chemical industry. Plant and Animal Physiology Liebig's work on applying chemistry to plant and animal physiology was especially influential. By 1842, he had published Chimie Organique Appliquie à la Physiologie Animale et à la Pathology, published in English as Animal Chemistry, or, Organic Chemistry in its Applications to Physiology and Pathology, presenting a chemical theory of metabolism. The experimental techniques used by Liebig and others often involved controlling and measuring diet and monitoring and analyzing the products of animal metabolism, as indicators of internal metabolic processes. Liebig saw similarities between plant and animal metabolism, and suggested that nitrogenous animal matter was similar to, and derived from, plant matter. He categorized foodstuffs into two groups, nitrogenous materials which he believed were used to build animal tissue, and non-nitrogenous materials which he believed were involved in separate processes of respiration and generation of heat. French researchers such as Jean-Baptiste Dumas and Jean-Baptiste Bussingault believed that animals assimilated sugars, proteins, and fats from plant materials and lacked the ability to synthesize them. Liebig's work suggested a common ability of plants and animals to synthesize complex molecules from simpler ones. His experiments on fat metabolism convinced him that animals must be able to synthesize fats from sugars and starch. Other researchers built upon his work, confirming the abilities of animals to synthesize sugar and build fat. Liebig also studied respiration, at one point measuring the ingesta and excreta of 855 soldiers, a bodyguard of the Grand Duke of Hessen-Darmstadt, for an entire month. He outlined an extremely speculative model of equations in which he attempted to explain how protein degradation might balance within a healthy body and result in pathological imbalances in cases of illness or inappropriate nutrition. This proposed model was justifiably criticized. Berzelius stingingly stated that this facile kind of physiological chemistry is created at the writing table. Some of the ideas that Liebig had enthusiastically incorporated were not supported by further research. The third and last edition of Animal Chemistry, 1846, was substantially revised and did not include the equations. The third area discussed in Animal Chemistry was fermentation and putrefaction. Liebig proposed chemical explanations for processes such as irema causes, organic decomposition, describing the rearrangement of atoms as a result of unstable affinities reacting to external causes such as air or already decaying substances. Liebig identified the blood as the site of the body's chemical factory, 
where he believed processes of synthesis and degradation took place. He presented a view of disease in terms of chemical process, in which healthy blood could be attacked by external contagia, secreting organs sought to transform and excrete such substances, and failure to do so could lead to their elimination through the skin, lungs, and other organs, potentially spreading contagion. Again, although the world was much more complicated than his theory, and many of his individual ideas were later proved wrong, Liebig managed to synthesize existing knowledge in a way that had significant implications for doctors, sanitarians, and social reformers. The English medical journal The Lancet reviewed Liebig's work and translated his chemical lectures as part of its mission to establish a new era of medicine. Liebig's ideas stimulated significant medical research, led to the development of better techniques for testing experimental models of metabolism, and pointed to chemistry as fundamental to the understanding of health and disease. In 1850 Liebig investigated spontaneous human combustion, dismissing the simplistic explanations based on ethanol due to alcoholism. Liebig and the Chemistry of Food Methods of Cookery Liebig drew upon his work in plant nutrition and plant and animal metabolism to develop a theory of nutrition, which had significant implications for cookery. In his Researches on the Chemistry of Food, 1847, Liebig argued that it was important to eat not only meat fiber, but also meat juices, which contained various inorganic chemicals. These vital ingredients would be lost during conventional boiling or roasting in which cooking liquids were discarded. For optimum nutritional quality, Liebig advised that cooks should either sear the meat initially to retain fluids, or retain and use cooking liquids, as in soups or stews. Liebig was acclaimed in The Lancet for revealing the true principles of cookery, and physicians promoted rational diets based on his ideas. Well-known British cookery writer Eliza Acton responded to Liebig by modifying the cookery techniques in the third edition of her Modern Cookery for Private Families, and subtitling the edition accordingly. Liebig's idea that searing meat seals in the juices, though still widely believed, is not true. Liebig's Extract of Meat Company Building on his theories of the nutritional value of meat fluids, and seeking an inexpensive nutrition source for Europe's poor, Liebig developed a formula for producing beef extract. The details were published in 1847 so that the benefit of it should be placed at the command of as large a number of persons as possible by the extension of the manufacture, and consequently a reduction in the cost. Production was not economically feasible in Europe, where meat was expensive, but in Uruguay and New South Wales meat was an inexpensive byproduct of the leather industry. In 1865, Liebig partnered with Belgian engineer George Christian Gibbert, and was named scientific director of the Liebig's Extract of Meat Company, located in Frey Bentos, Uruguay. Other companies also attempted to market meat extracts under the name Liebig's Extract of Meat. In Britain, a competitor's right to use the name was successfully defended on the grounds that the name had fallen into general use and become a generic term before the creation of any particular company. The judge asserted that purchasers must use their eyes, and considered the presentation of the products to be sufficiently different to enable the discriminating consumer to determine which of the products bore Liebig's signature and was supported by Baron Liebig himself. Liebig's company initially promoted their meat tea for its curative powers and nutritional value as a cheap, nutritious alternative to real meat. After claims of its nutritional value were questioned, they emphasized its convenience and flavor, marketing it as a comfort food. The Liebig company worked with popular cookery writers in various countries to popularize their products. German cookery writer Henriette Davides wrote recipes for improved and economic cookery and other cookbooks. Katrina Prado wrote an Austria-Hungarian recipe book, Die Proktisk Verwerthung Kokerecept, 1879. Hannah M. Young was commissioned in England to write practical cookery book for the Liebig Company. In the United States, Maria Parlow extolled the benefits of Liebig's extract. Colorful calendars and trading cards were also marketed to popularize the product. The company also worked with English chemist Henry Enfield Roscoe to develop a related product which it registered some years after Liebig's death, under the OXO trademark. OXO was trademarked worldwide in 1899 and in the United Kingdom in 1900. 
Originally a liquid, OXO was released in cubed solid form in 1911. Marmite Liebig studied other foods as well. He promoted the use of baking powder to make lighter bread, studied the chemistry of coffee making, and developed a breast milk substitute for babies who could not suckle. He is considered to have made possible the invention of Marmite, because of his discovery that yeast could be concentrated. Later Life In 1852, Justice von Liebig accepted an appointment from King Maximilian II of Bavaria to the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich. He also became scientific advisor to King Maximilian II, who hoped to transform the University of Munich into a center for scientific research and development. In part, Liebig accepted the post because, at age 50, he was finding it increasingly difficult to supervise large numbers of laboratory students. His new accommodations in Munich reflected this shift in focus. They included a comfortable house suitable for extensive entertaining, a small laboratory, and a newly built lecture theatre capable of holding 300 people with a demonstration laboratory at the front. There he gave lectures to the university and fortnightly to the public. In his position as a promoter of science, Liebig was appointed president of the Bavarian Academy of Sciences and Humanities, becoming perpetual president of the Royal Bavarian Academy of Sciences in 1858. Liebig enjoyed a personal friendship with Maximilian II, who died on March 10, 1864. After Maximilian's death, Liebig and other liberal Protestant scientists in Bavaria were increasingly opposed by ultramontane Catholics. Liebig died in Munich in 1873, and is buried in the Alter Sudfriedhof in Munich. Awards and Honours Liebig was elected a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in 1837. He became a first-class member of the Ludwig Order, founded by Ludwig I, and awarded by Ludwig II on July 24, 1837. In 1838 he became correspondent of the Royal Institute of the Netherlands, when that became the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1851 he joined as foreign member. The British Royal Society awarded him the Copley Medal for his discoveries in organic chemistry, and particularly for his development of the composition and theory of organic radicals in 1840. Ludwig II of Bavaria conveyed the title of Freiherr von Liebig on December 29, 1845. In English, the closest translation is Baron. In 1850, he received the French Legion d'honneur, presented by chemist Jean-Baptiste Dumas, the French trade minister. He was honored with the Prussian Order of Merit for Science by Friedrich Wilhelm IV of Prussia in 1851. In 1869, he was awarded the Albert Medal by the Royal Society of Arts, for his numerous valuable researches and writings, which have contributed most importantly to the development of food economy and agriculture, to the advancement of chemical science, and to the benefits derived from that science by arts, manufacturers, and commerce. Posthumous Honours In 1946, after the end of World War II, the University of Gießen was officially renamed after him, Justice Liebig Universität Gießen. In 1953, the West German Post Office issued a stamp in his honor. In 1953, the Third General Assembly of the International Scientific Center of Fertilizers, CIEC, founded in 1932, was organized in Darmstadt to honor Justice von Liebig on the 150th anniversary of his birth. A portrait of Liebig hangs in the Burlington House headquarters of the Royal Society of Chemistry. It was presented to the Society's forerunner, the Chemical Society, by his goddaughter M.R.S. Alec Tweedy, Ethel Brill Iana Tweedy, Harley, daughter of Emma Muspratt.